Once you finish the short screenplay, what are the first steps in making the movie? So here's the thing. I'm actually a believer of don't do the screenplay first. I think you need to think about what you want to tell and then can you tell it? Because if you're actually making this thing and financing it yourself, it's not like a feature where you're writing the whole script and then you're going around to people and trying to get funding. For a short film, more realistically, it's either going to be like you're shooting it in class because you have to or you're funding it yourself to get it made. So I, I, I don't think it's worthwhile writing a script that you can't actually get made. For example, a filmmaker uh, that I produced his first short film, his second short film, he had this great idea that had a um, big water effect happening. It's like, Who's, who can afford that? Who knows anyone who can do the water effect? And it's just the film has never been made because just couldn't do it that way. So you can write it, but you know, if, if you're not thinking like I'm actually making this, then you could write something that you just never afford to do. You could do it as an exercise. But so I think it's more important to think about, okay, what do you actually want to make and how can you make it? What do you have access to that could work well for a short film? And that's why a lot of short films and low budget features like shot in homes, because everyone's like, well, I have my own home. I can shoot in my own home. Um, and that's true. You totally can. But you also have like your car and you also have, uh, you know, uh, you could go shoot in your office building or you could go shoot at the park or you could go shoot, you know, your friend has a pool. Why not? said something in the pool. So I think it's important to kind of think first about, uh, I call it organic filmmaking. What do you actually have access to? Um, when I teach low budget filmmaking, I can't tell you often people have hospitals in their script. It's like, how are you going to get a hospital? You know, hospitals don't be like, sure, just show up and we'll let you shoot here. So if you wrote an entire short film that was set in a hospital, only do that if you have access to either you can pay for a hospital set or you have access to a hospital in some way. I think it's more important to think about, well, what do I actually have access? What story do I want to tell? What do I actually have access to? And can I write something for that? So then it's less money because you already have access to all of that and it's more unique. You know, it's like, think about it that way. How many short films do we see that are based in pools? Not that many, but if you have an access to a pool, you can come up with something really unique that is set in that pool that would make a really interesting short film. So think about that first before you write it. But like, you know, you should, if you're a horror filmmaker, don't do the, I, we'll do a sunny story about somebody in a pool and a diving contest or something like that. No, you should do a horror story set in a pool, but won't that be unique because how many horror stories are set in a pool? So think about what you actually have access to. If you're, you have to say to yourself, I'm actually gonna make this thing. So I'm actually gonna make it. I'm gonna probably have to fund it myself how what how can i do it as cheap as possible and still have it look great and the answer is use things that you can actually get for free so your uncle owns a dry cleaner fabulous how many dry cleaner shorts do we know very few let's figure out something that you can tell the story that means something to you in a dry cleaners thing and it'll be true horror film in a dry cleaners i would love to see that i think it would be really special and unique so don't just write it to write it write it in the sense of i'm going to make this so can i actually make it and if you can't make it, then you have to kind of put it aside in the drawer until you're at the point that you know the right people that can um, do all these special effects that you hope to do. I also think that's also why you want to think about what your background is too. Like, you know, if you are, for example, a, uh, a stuntman and you want to move into being a director, stunt person, and you want to move into being a director, well, you have a lot of access in the stunt world and people are going to expect you to do something kind of stunty. So use all of that. And that's the kind of short film that you should make and write. Now that comes the story part and that's not so easy, but at least you have that arena of like, I'm a stunt person. People are going to expect stunt people thing. I want to direct things that are stunt heavy. I know four different stunt people I know would be great in this. I know this location that they'll let me use for free. Okay. Now what kind of story can I create in this? And sometimes you're not the right writer for it. Maybe you're like, I'm a stunt man. I'm not a writer. Ah, but I've met, you know, or maybe you'd have to take a class, take a class with writing so you can meet writers or, you know, find somebody who will write it for you. You don't have to absolutely do everything yourself. You can do everything yourself. And sometimes it's cheaper if you do everything yourself, but, um, you know, work to your strengths and figure out what you can do, but go in the theory of I'm going to make it because there's no point in having like a whole drawer of short film scripts. Nobody's going to, there are a few contests for short film scripts. Um, so if you want to do that, I say again, more power to you. And those, maybe you're writing more, for people to read them and to give you awards and know that they're not necessarily going to give the award to the horror story set in the laundromat uh, or the dry cleaner. But um, don't write it just to write it. Write it because you're going to actually make it. Sure. So it sounds like sit down, decide 
what do I have access to? What's actually in my wheelhouse? What can I do? And then once you know, okay, I have this dry cleaner, for, you know, it's my uncle's dry cleaner uh, st store, whatever. I know that he'll let me on the day that they, you know, exactly. shut down. They're closed on Sundays. Right. Like right, right, right. Mondays, three Mo Mondays if I need to. Right, right. They, they know that's their slow day. So they'll, and, and then, you know, we have this, like, let's say, a serial killer that leaves a letter in a, a jacket or something. And and there you go. And then, and so then the, the young dry clean worker tries to figure out who it belongs to. And Anyway, but but no. Another film we're going to yeah, go there. Make. We go. See, that's the great thing. There's so many ideas out uh -huh. there. Right, right. And then you just have to say, is this what I really want to put my time and effort into making? Sure. And then that's when you start the script. That's I guess what right. I believe. Okay. That's what you should start right. the script. Right. And then when you write the script, it doesn't mean like it's come out of my computer. I'm ready to shoot. Then you really have to look at: is this a strong beginning? Is this a strong ending? Is every scene start and end at the right time? You really want to be very critical on the script stage because you're going to actually make this. It's not just to be read by people and say you're a very talented writer. We're not going to hire you, but we see that there's talent here, and we're going to, you know, uh, get you an agent or something like that. It's, nobody wants to read a short script. You know, it is literally a document to be made. So, you know. Be tight and do all your criticism of what works and what doesn't work before you go shoot it. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, coming away with a long... <laughs> you thought it was going to be... I always tell people, like, if your script is 12 pages long, it's not going to be a 12-minute short. It's going to be a 15-minute short. You know, that rule of one page, one minute doesn't... It's not concrete of always going to turn out that way. So if you... And quite often short films are more leisurely paced than they should be. So if you write an eight-page script, that's more likely going to end up being a 10 to 12-page film. It just expands beyond what was actually on the page. Oh, that's great! I didn't actually think about that. So, mm. so then, uh, less credits. is more. L yeah, less is more. Right. Plus, you're gonna have credits at the end, et cetera, et cetera. So, don't you know? I'm gonna make a 12 minute film. It's a 12 page script. Here we go. No, no, no. Okay. So also, you don't want to spend all that money for it. Like, why shoot the 12 scenes? You know, of him, par him driving up to the dry cleaner, putting money in the meter. It was like that was a day that we spent outside doing all that, and turns out we don't need any of that. The story starts inside when the person walks in the door. Right. So if let's say it's the it's the replacement, and he's coming in to somebody's day off, and just have him already in the dry cleaner. Exactly. Don't don't show him uh, begrudging and. <laughs> Having to drink coffee and psych himself up to go there. Just exactly. have him there. He sees an old jacket. He feels around. Oh, there's a letter in there. Okay, great. Now we've got a story. Okay. Exactly. Perfect. What if you don't have a budget? What if you can't pay anyone? So here's the thing. You know, for a short film, I always say nobody's making any money off of this. It's totally a labor of love. And everyone who's going to work on it wants you to succeed, wants the film to succeed, wants it to be as great as it is. And people love to help out. So I often say for a short film, don't pay anybody. You know, if you're only asking for one day or two days on the weekend, people want to help you out. They're not expecting cash. However, in a proper production, you should be paying people at least minimum wage. Uh, you are employing these people. I always say people always get hurt on a short film. <laughs> it's really crew-wise, you, know, um, you know. And if you're doing SAG, you have to have insurance for the actors too. There's a lot of, and if you're trying to do this to learn how to do filmmaking in a proper way, then you should do it the proper way. Pay everybody, do the eight hour day, 10 hour day, 12 hour day, do overtime, et cetera, et cetera. Do all the paperwork the way you would do paperwork for productions and you're learning how to do it. But I also am a big fan of the, you know, you and your four friends are gonna go do this on the sly. Um, and you know, you're not paying anybody anything, uh, but you should feed them well. That's always the rules. Like, you know, so you can't do it for like no money, but you know, get your mom to cater it or something like that. Um, and if it's your friends that are working with you, they're not, they want to help you. They want to do a good job. And if you're students and everyone's kind of under the student umbrella that way too. So, you know, but you have to be true to what your film is. If you have no money, then don't write the hospital story <laughs> that you don't have access to a hospital unless you can rent a hospital set. That's truly when you have to set it. That if you have truly no money, be creative. Think of other ways that you can do it. Think of what you um, can shoot. Um, and you know, often for short film too, like you can steal a lot of shots too. These are not going to be commercially exhibited more often than not. So you know, steal things, uh, not like literally steal things in your pocket, but two shots that you don't have permission to do shots with that can give a lot of production value and make it unique and special. And you know, for short film too, there's no uh, saying that you can't shoot, shoot it for you know one hour here, one hour there, two hours here. Uh, there's no rule that it has to be shot in a traditional filmmaking way of we're, we're bringing all these people together for a limited period of time. So um, you know, again, shoot on your iPhone. That 
you already own it. You already, um, you can edit on your iPhone. You can do everything in that way too. So shoot, I'd rather you do something great with what you can afford to do than try to do something great with not enough money and it falls flat. Because you always think, well, I can redo it when I have money. It's like, no, it's been made. That's what it is. You're never gonna go back and be like, oh, now I have thousands of dollars and I can redo it. But I will also say for a lot of my students, they think like, oh, I only have $2,000, I'm gonna make a short film. And it's like, yes, you, you totally can. Again, I know people who've made short films for $500, for $100. You can totally do it for no money, but money does start creeping in. And you know, I'd rather you have $4,000 to do a really great short film than $2,000 to do a half-assed short film.